We went to this fall time event called Apple Fest and saw all different kinds of apple treats there. I think that's when the caramel apple obsession started for us. So Joe and I started buying Granny Smith apples to slice them up and dip them in caramel as a treat. My mother-in-law saw us doing this one day and figured, oh, they must really like these kinds of apples. So the next time she was at the store, she picked up a big bag for us. So I knew it was time to whip up an apple tart with apple glaze. It's sweet and tart and easier than pie. So roll up your sleeves, I'll show you how to make it. This apple tart with apple glaze is actually surprisingly easy to make and only requires just a few ingredients. What you'll need is flour, unsalted butter, sugar, salt, ice water, and green apples. I just chopped up 12 tablespoons of cold unsalted butter, or one and a half sticks, for our tart crust. And if you have a food processor, this goes by really, really quickly. But if you don't have a food processor, you can use a couple of forks or even your hands. So I just have two cups of regular all-purpose flour, a tablespoon of white sugar, a little sweetness, and half a teaspoon of kosher salt. If you're using fine salt, remember to use just a quarter teaspoon instead. Lid on, and then a couple pulses, so it's well mixed. And now we add our butter. I try to shoot for about 10 pulses because you don't want to totally destroy your butter into nothing. That's the thing about baking, flour gets everywhere. Okay. You can see that the size of the butter is about the size of peas. So at this point, this is good. Okay, ice water. I'm just straining it so I can catch any ice cubes. I'm gonna do about a third of a cup. I like to just put a little in first. Put the rest in. You see, it's not coming together like a big ball of dough, but if you pick it up and you press it between your fingers, it actually kind of pats into a dough. So I think this is good. And this is where you want to stop because you don't want to overprocess your dough. So you're going to pour out your crumbly mixture onto an, a saran wrap. Be careful about the blade. And at this point, you use your hands just a little bit. Now, it's not pizza dough, so you don't want glutens to develop, so just be pretty gentle with this. And in fact, you can use your saran wrap to kind of help you push it together. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of trying to form it into a square or rectangle shape. I'm shooting for a rectangle, but we'll see. Because when we roll it out, it's gonna be a rectangle. So you might as well do it in this step and help yourself along. Okay, put this in the fridge for at least an hour. If you wanted to kind of do this step ahead, you could and keep it in the fridge overnight. I wish I had a little piece. The oven is preheated to 400 degrees, and I already started rolling out my pastry on a floured surface. Make sure you flour your rolling pin too. And you might have noticed that I'm missing a handle. 
Oh well. Just use what you have. Even a wine bottle would work if you didn't have a rolling pin. And you see, in theory, because we put it into a rectangle shape, it stays as a rectangle shape when you roll it out. And I'm not really going for a particular size or a particular perfect rectangular shape. I'm just rolling it out till it's evenly about a quarter inch thick. Uh, you don't want it to be super thick, but you don't want it to be overly thin either. Otherwise, it'll be kind of more like a cracker than a crust. When you're happy with the thickness and or shape, then you can start to trim the edges out and form it more into an even rectangular shape. And it's also to cut off the over smushed edges. Because if it's too smushed, then it might burn faster and cook unevenly. So just use a sharp knife and you can use a ruler and a straight edge if you really want to and you want to make it perfect. But I'm just going to make it rustic. Now I'm going to transfer it onto a parchment lined baking sheet using my rolling pin. So I find this to be the easiest way. Kind of like a loose drape over your rolling pin. Don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, you want to probably put this into the fridge again if you have space. In my case, I actually don't have space in the fridge, so I'm just going to work fast and slice up my apples and just put this on the side. I'm finishing up peeling up four apples, Granny Smith, and you could use lemon juice and sprinkle them on if you just if you want to make sure that they don't turn brown but I don't think it really needs it. But that's one of the reasons why I do the apple part last. You're probably wondering why didn't you do this while you're waiting for your tart dough? Well, because of that reason, because I didn't want it to turn brown and ugly. So just do it last, it doesn't take too long. What I'm gonna do is just slice around the core. And if you notice what I'm doing, I put all the peels and the cores in this pot in a saucepan because actually, I'm going to make a glaze out of those. So there's gonna be no waste of those. So make sure you reserve them. Don't throw them out. Whew. And make sure you're like me and use a super small cutting board while you cut all your apples so that they almost fall on the floor. Seriously, what was I thinking? And you're just gonna cut all your slices, I mean all your apple pieces into quarter inch slices. So thin, but not super thin. Thin enough that you can fan them onto your tart and layer them. Okay, just gonna keep going. Okay, last one. Yeah. I'm just layering my apples, stacking them actually, overlaying them on top of each other one by one. And I'm doing it in kind of like a row going this way, and a row going that way, and then going this way, alternating. Um, no reason why, just because I feel like it looks pretty. The point is to actually oof, make sure that you have enough apple coverage over the entire tart. This is the time to be a greedy apple pig. And I'm trying to get it as close to the edges and close to each other as possible, because apples do shrink, so you know, there's gonna be uh, some space in between once they start cooking and shrinking in the oven. So I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, I'm basically done. I'm just trying to use up most of my apple slices and shove them in. The more the tart is covered, the less likely it's gonna turn into like a cracker crust and burn. I know that actually sadly from experience. The rest of these slices, especially like these bigger fatter wedges, um, just put them into your pot with the cores and the skins and use that as part of your glaze as well. Next step, a third of a cup of granulated sugar. And this requires a little patience, my friends. Be gentle, be loving, be sweet. Remember, Granny Smith apples are purposely tart. That's why you need the sugar. The sugar will also help 
the edges of the apples brown and caramelize. Once you're done with your sugar snowfall, you get four tablespoons, which is half a stick of unsalted butter. The butter will help keep everything nice and moist. Tell me that doesn't look good already. So again, oven is at 400. You're gonna pop it in for anywhere between 40 to 45 minutes, but every oven is different and you might wanna make sure that your oven is calibrated. So around 35 minutes, just check it. If the crust looks cooked and the apples are brown, then it's done. Time to make the sweet glaze. For that, you're gonna need a half a cup of sugar over all your cores, stems, and random apple pieces that you didn't put on the tart. Over medium, medium high heat and then just enough water to kind of cover everything. But not too much because otherwise you'll be reducing for days. And give it a little stir just to make sure it gets dissolved. And you're gonna just leave this uncovered and let it reduce, get thick and sweet. And all I'm gonna do is other things Make sure you rotate your tart halfway through the cooking time, just so that it's even, and that's all. What do you think? Looks good, right? So I have my apple glaze. I just strained it. So this is all you have left. But that's all you need. You might not even need all of this. You know what's really weird? When I was testing this recipe out, my oven was fine and my tart went all the way up to 45 minutes. This time, I don't know what's going on. Maybe I've been using it too often or something, but it only took 35 minutes. So really, like I said before, make sure your oven is calibrated and also spy on your tart. It can take anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the hotness of your oven. So that's all you're looking for, for just a little bit of goldenness and a little bit of brownness on the apples. And you see the apple um, juice is burned on the side, but that's normal. So don't worry about that if that happens because of the sugars and the butter and the apples. And I'm definitely not gonna use all of this glaze. I'm gonna have leftover. I'm gonna let this chill out for a little bit, make myself a cup of coffee and get ready to taste it. Bye bye tart, see you in a little bit. Be sure not to be standing near anyone because you're going to want to slap somebody. The apples are sweet and tart and the flaky buttery crust is just, I mean, no words really. Let's just talk about some substitutions. So for the apples, I wouldn't suggest using anything but Granny Smith because they are tart and they hold their shape pretty well. But for the crust, if you're like, Julie, I'm not going through all that. Then don't. Buy some pre-made crust and roll it out or some puff pastry. But make sure you watch your time because it might take less time to bake in the oven. This would be perfect for Thanksgiving, especially with a scoop of ice cream. So I don't know, just enjoy it. Well, if you like this video, remember to tell us by pushing like and leave a comment below and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. So good with coffee too. Another piece. <laughs>